Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our budget interesting commanders, and we're looking at the EDH uh, budget spell slingers this time. Spell slingers is a big one. I really, I was excited for this one. I was actually putting a spell slinger deck together this week myself, so I thought it was a good time for it. Spell slinger theme. So this is a theme I have the least experience playing with, which is why I've left it this long. So things like plus one, plus one counters, uh, token generators, um, all kinds of things. I think I do quite a bit. I really have it. Spell slingers a bit complicated and unique. You can't really like have just like a dash of spell slinger. It has to kind of be like a large part of the deck, or you know, if you're just including enchants and sorceries, that's not really a spell slinger. But anyway, um, these decks can be very fast and difficult to keep countering. Right? How many counter spells are they going to have? How many? Even at a commander table, how many are actually going to be not only in their decks but in their hands when you're casting things? Can they afford to keep doing it? Probably not. They probably just do not have the cards for it. Uh, these can be a lot of fun and uh, create a lively game experience. So I think these are very dramatic. They're very interesting like that. Uh, so I was making up yeah, a Faraday. So. This and the roll mechanic. So I feel like that's a like big drama. I'm going for a big drama deck. So it's all about like having big effects and like yeah, just rolling and yeah, be being very like unpredictable, I guess. So yeah, looks like fun. Please hit like and subscribe. It does make such a big difference, and I know every YouTuber says to do that, but you know what? I'm special, and uh, yeah, do it for mine instead, instead of theirs. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just be mean. In the 99. Okay, so Storm Kiln Artist, three in a red, and for this dwarf, two two dwarf, uh, he gets plus one, uh, plus zero for each artifact you control. Not a bad start. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. So yeah, casting your instance is just becoming like a mana resource, especially if you've got like, uh, what is it called? A cantrip deck where you're basically like casting a bunch of very low cost things so that you draw cards. You're going to be able to basically keep creating treasures as fast as you're using mana. So you can technically or technically probably to like go through your whole deck or maybe that's an exaggeration or off, you know kind of an optimal idea but it's possible anyway 93 cents all right now we've got two otters hey yeah bloomborough it was very spell slinger centric so we've got quite a bit of that in this list which i'm always happy to see because i love me some otters yes i do anyway storm catch mentor uh is it um Blue red for a 1-1 one, one with haste. Not a bad start. And it prowess as well. Okay, prowess on a spell slinger deck, that's crazy. Especially I always think Jeskai for prowess, maybe because of the monks, but anyway. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Ho. Oh. Um what is the goblin's name? Of course I forget everything. But yeah. There's a goblin that reduces your instant sorceries by one. Basically the same casting cost and everything. But yeah, he doesn't have prowess or haste. So yeah, this is a huge upgrade. Um, basically just a much better version. I keep thinking, I can even picture it, but I can't remember the name. 25 cents. And Coruscation Mage for one or red is a 2-2 two -two with offspring too. I do like offspring as a mechanic. And a band, but anyway. Yeah, so you pay two extra mana, you make a 1-1 one, one token copy of this. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this cre uh, creature deals one damage to each opponent. Especially, you're going to have your, like, hopefully your red damage increasing things, effects. That's um going to get carried away really fast, right? If you even add an extra one, every time you cast any non-creature spell, that's... You know, it doesn't count lands because you're not casting, it doesn't count creatures because they're creatures, but everything else is going to be like 2 damage to every opponent. And if you're playing like a multiplayer format, 
like commander for instance uh that's six bonus damage just for casting anything oh boy anyway 43 cents Number five, Nimesit Paran, Paran, I don't know how to say that word, I think. Three blue, three red. Is it, but a very annoying casting cost is what I'd say. So that's a downside right there, but he's a five, five player and the spell can't be countered. These are all very good things. He's in 14,277 decks. I don't think I've covered any commander that was in that many decks. This is, again, this is an older card that helps a lot, but it, that's a monster of a number right there. Oh my. Anyway, okay, so uh, whenever you draw a card, niv Mesut Peron deals one damage to any target. Very nice. Card draw to damage. You want to do, you, you always want to draw cards. Turning that into like another advantage is always nice. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. Oh, so you get card draw and do damage off of other people just playing the game. That is something I love. Also, whenever you cast an instant or social, you get to draw a card as well. Again, that effect where you're like, kind of turning any spell into a cantrip, really. You're gonna cast a spell, draw a card, do one damage. That, well, if you got, you, you know, kill an artist out, he's gonna make a token or a treasure token and then you can use that to keep casting more and yeah you can just keep going anyway 115 um this is really like an is it staple right here okay this was not on the edh rec list edh rec sometimes is really weird about things i don't know if they omit it intentionally because this is this is pretty cheap right here but curiosity one blue for this aura, whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent. Deals damage, not combat damage, just damage. Just damage. You may draw a card. Okay, so you draw a card, he deals one damage to an opponent. So you draw a card, so he deals one damage to an opponent, so you draw a card. Yeah, infinite. It goes infinite right away. If you want to shut it off so you don't mill yourself out drawing cards, you just attack anything except for your opponent. Done. Um, yeah. <laughs> Again, cheap, but like, fun at the same time, I think. I actually have this combo in my Faraday deck. So anyway, 19 cents. Niv Mezit, the Fire Mine. So another one of himself. Two, a blue, blue, red, red. I think a much more reasonable casting cost, first of all. He's only a 4-4 four, four flyer, though, instead of a 5-5. Five, five. And whenever you draw a card, he deals 1 damage to any target. So once again, just automatically dealing 1 damage. And if you have both of them out, 2 damage to a target on every card draw. That makes that curiosity thing into, like, a game ender. If you have to, like, if you're in commander and you've got to, like, get through 120 opponent's life, you can't do that by drawing cards because you only have 99 cards in your library. However, if you do two damage every time, well, hey, you only need 20 cards. You need 60 cards to do 120 damage then. So you can, yeah, you can have those two out, curiosity on one of them, doesn't matter which one, and then boom, game's over. It's pretty much it right there. He also taps to draw a card. Anyway, 84 cents. Arcane Bombardment. Um, so this is really leaning into the uh, spell slinger part of it. Four red, red. High CMC for this enchantment, unfortunately. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery spell at random from your graveyard. Wish it wasn't at random, but anyway. Uh, then copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment. You may cast uh, uh, any number of copies without paying their mana cost. So you're just going to keep exiling cards from your graveyard at random, unfortunately, and then you're going to cast all the things you've copied, or all the things you've exiled. Um, oh, even by like the third turn, this is out. This is just like insanely powerful. 
Again, it is 6, so it's going to be like mid to late game you're getting this out. So it, unfortunately you can't get this off the ground right away, but it'll be a value engine. Now we have 143. Number 4. Hilo the Painter and Hello? And Hello? I don't know. I feel like I'm not saying it right. Anyway, he is in 3,462 decks, so not bad. And he is Grixis, just straight up Grixis, so does blue, black, red for a 1 3 with Death Touch? Hmm. The Death Touch I do like. The first instant or source spell you cast each turn has Casualty 2. So as you cast that spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power 2 or greater. When you do copy the spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So he could just automatically copy anything. You just have to have anything with two power to sack, and you can just keep doing it. So if you've got like two two zombies, or anything you can make into a two two, or even just to have two power, um, boom, you're set. Um, you can't really get a lot more flexible than this. Grixis is also, I think, the most like go to. It's like is it and Grixis are the, like the most like spell slinger uh, archetype things. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, 50 cents. All right, so we got Cast Dissident Mage. Um, I have this from the original Wizard Precon. Commander Precon, I mean. Anyway, so is she is one Grixis, again, blue, black, red, for a 3 4 flyer. Not bad. Actually, I didn't realize she was flying. During each of your turns, you may cast an Insor Sorcery spell from your graveyard. Not bad. If a spell is cast this way, it would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. So this is a really easy one to hack. Just adventures, right? Especially when you've got three colors to work off of. Adventures are pretty easy to like find with three color options. Um, you can just like keep, basically you cast it as it's like sorcery or instant and then you exile it and then because it's not in the graveyard it doesn't get exiled again like out of the game and then you can cast it as like the creature or whatever the permanent from exile so basically you just keep cycling things forever that way you never really have to exile anything or permanently exile i should say you are exiling but exile that you get back the good exile Anyway, 92 cents. And for uh, Symmetry Sage, here is one blue. A human wizard, a 0-2 flyer. Another flyer. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creature target creature you control has power 2 until end of turn. So, so good for him because you cast a spell, you got it like a you can make a whole bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens easily. Even you can have the spell make a 1-1 one, one token, right? There's lots of things that let you do that. And then you use Symmetry Sage, her trigger, to make it a 2-1. And then you do the casualty thing. You sack it right away. So you can have it set up. So like casting a spell creates the creature. You give it the 2 power and then you, you sack it right away to like copy the spell. So it's a pretty easy engine. Anyway, four cents for that only. Finally, Sinister Concierge. Um, for a one and a blue is a two one. Every time we see Concierge, I think of uh, The Office when Michael goes to Winnipeg. I'm actually from Winnipeg, so that was funny for me. He says that a concierge is like a Canadian geisha. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So when, uh, when this dies, basically you exile something and put three time counters on it. Oh, sorry, not something, a creature. It has to be a creature. She and the creature get exiled with three time counters. And then after those, they gain suspend. After the time counters are done, they come back into the battlefield. So you can just sack her and she goes to exile and suspend again. And you, you can keep knocking other people's stuff out that way too. You can temporarily keep sending creatures into like into uh, exile which uh, it can be very very powerful especially when you can repeat the effect over and over and over uh, it also means you get to uh, like 
every three turns you're going to be able to like copy a spell without having to worry about like making a token or sacrificing something. She'll just keep coming back and you'll keep like sacking her right away. So you're getting a bonus for that sack and that's what you really want out of this deck. Anyway, 25 cents only. Hmm. Number three. Harris Roar of the Storm. So eat blue red, is it? This looks like a terrible choice for a commander at first, right? Casting cost of 10? Are you kidding? But let's read. Anyway, he is a 4 4 flyer with prowess. Flyer and prowess is a nice combination for a spell slinger, that's for sure. This spell costs two less to cast for each different mana value among instants or sorceries in your graveyard. So if you have four different mana values, again, four different CMCs in your graveyard, um, he's already only two mana to cast. And then after that, if you get, let's say, you've got like maybe even a zero, if you can get a zero, that's great, but even one, two, three, four. Later in the game, having a five, not that hard. And you can uh, get rid of commander attacks with that, right? That cost reduction does count towards this commander attacks and the effects like that. So you can really get advantage out of that. Anyway, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, I like that it says second spell. Not second instant or sorcery, no, just second spell, any spell. Create a 4 4 red dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess. So he's a 4 4 flyer with prowess that makes 4 4 flyers with prowess. Also, Elemental Kindred. Elemental Kindred is very, very strong. Um, you can get a lot of like easy value out of that as well. Anyway, 99 cents. Yeah, I actually did a series on Elemental Kindred. They're one of the first like creature types in Magic, so they've been around since the beginning. That means they have just a ridiculous number of options, especially with the Spell Slinger, the very, very high synergy. Okay, so we've got Elemental Eruption, 6 CMC, 4 red red. For this sorcery, create a 4-4 four, four red dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess. So you'd be able to do 2 that turn, that's not great, it's not bad, but Storm. It has Storm. Oh. And yeah, so again, for each time, any spell you cast, or anyone has cast before that, you can cast this and make a copy of it. So you're just going to like have a whole bunch of these. Um, you can hopefully make a good, it is six CMC, so that's not low, but hopefully you can at least get two spells cast before this, and then you're going to have three of those. And if the, even if this is like the third spell, that means you've already made a four four flyer with prowess, which means, yeah, you're just going to have, well, a five five because of, um, Pro yeah, the prowess is going to make it a 5-5. Five, five. You're going to have three four fours that turn. So if you've got some way to get uh, haste, I guess, is the last thing you'd need. Anyway, 115. Flamekin Harbinger. One red. This is up quite a bit to 96 cents. I did this, uh, uh, I'd say, about five months ago. I did this in a video. I think it was 16 cents. So it's a good ways up. But anyway... When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an elemental card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put it on top. Okay, it doesn't go to hand, which is unfortunate, but you are able to be like, this is what I'm getting. That is very, very useful. Knowing what your next card draw is, is not good, as good as just putting it into your hand, but it's still extremely useful. 96 cents. And Jory N. Rune Diver. Uh, one... Uh, blue red again is it um jory and i always think that sounds like uh jorel you know superman's dad but anyway whenever you cast your second spell each turn draw a card again just getting as many of those second spell triggers is going to like be so worth it so you're going to like make a 4-4 flying elemental dragon with prowess and then you're going to like draw a card oh boy 74 cents number two Riku of many paths okay this is our teamer option here again is it plus green basically 
is what we're looking at for Teamer. So green, red, blue, or blue, red, whatever you want to call it. He is only in 1,926 decks. Pretty low, <coughs> considering where he's on the list here. But yeah, I actually pulled one of these from Outlaws and Th Thunder Junction. That's why he's got so few decks, because he's a, from a newer set. I guess Outlaws of Thunder Junction isn't super new anymore, but it's newer still. So yeah. And uh, yeah, whenever you cast a modal spell, choose up to X where X is the number of times you chose a mode for that spell. Okay, modal spell, I actually did a, do a whole series on modal spells. We are, well, I was calling it budget mechanics, now it's card cycles. Um, definitely check that out. There's so many amazing modal spells, like you have no idea. But when they say modal spell, they don't mean the only one option modal spells. Which are called modal spells, but there's also confluences, which usually let you choose three options in the same option numerous times, and usually give you three different options. So it's the number of modes you choose, the number of times you choose something, not the specific things you choose. So again, like with confluences, you have three options and you can choose the same option multiple times. So maybe you can choose three times, you can choose option A three times. You don't have to go A, B, C. You can just say option A three times. X is still three. It's the number of times you choose, not the number of choices you make. So yeah. Let's say X is three. Let's see what you got here. Excel the top card of your library until end of your turn, you may play it. Hey, or sorry, end of your next turn, you may play it. Very good. Also play, that means if it's a land, you can still use it. Um, put a plus one, plus one counter on Rico of many paths. It gains trample until end of turn. So he's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and gain trample. Not too shabby. Last one, create a 1-1 one, one bird creature token with flying. Sure, you know what? 1-1 one, one flyers, especially like basically just block it, whatever you want. It's great to have the little blockers there. This is very, very powerful. I do want to build one of him, especially since covering all the uh, modal things. Just amazing. Okay, any 25 cents? Mystic Confluence. Okay, so we're getting into the yeah options here. The Confluence, three uh, blue, blue, five CMC, a little bit high actually, but choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Counter target spell unless its controller pays three. I use this. The tax effects are not popular. You use this to counter someone's like second spell or counter spells. If someone's trying to play a counter spell during your turn, they probably don't have an extra three mana to sink into it. And what's really nice about this, like five CMC for a counter spell does not sound good, and it's not, but this is gonna counter the spell. And you can return target creature to its owner's hand or just draw a card. If you counter that spell and draw two cards even, that's worth it. Or maybe return two creatures to the owner's hands and get that attack in. Worth it. So many ways you can make that worth it. Anyway, 28 cents for that one. Next one is Cosmium Confluence. This is actually one I covered recently, this the past week. Four and a green, for, so again, five CMC. Choose three, you may choose the same mode more than once. Search your library for a cave card. Caves are so good. I'm actually, next week we're going to do an episode just on caves, because they are just amazing. They're underappreciated land type. Anyway. Uh, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So for five mana, you can go get three lands and put them into the battlefield tapped. Three is a lot for five mana. Usually even three basic lands for five mana would be pretty good. This is three caves that can be like dual or even like multicolored lands. Anyway, put three plus one plus one counters on a cave. You control it, becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. If you're doing a land kind of creature deck, this can be very good. Um, not my thing, but there's some decks this would be amazing in. Finally, destroy target enchantment. So even if you don't want to make a cave into a creature, 
you can get one or one to three caves in or just destroy a bunch of enchantments for five mana oh it's eight cents for this it's only eight cents oh you just need to have the caves that's what really matters finally prismari command again the commands are another type of modal okay one blue red prismari is is it it's just the what is it called again uh, I forget the name of everything when I'm recording anyway yeah it's just another name from one yeah set for is it <sighs> okay sure anyway choose two Press Mario Command deals two damage to any target. Yeah. Target player draws two cards, then discards two cards. I like that as target player instead of just you. You can use it to help people or force them to draw. Maybe that's going to like cause them damage or something or mill them. Target player creates a treasure token. Destroy target artifact. So yeah. Not too shabby. You can't choose the same mode more than once is the kind of downside there. But even three mana if you're going to like create a t treasure token and uh, destroy an artifact. I'd say that's worth it already. Okay. Number one. Alania, Diversion Storm. All right, we got another otter here. So three uh, blue red. This is actually in my Faraday deck as well. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, if it's the first instant sorcery spell, or first, oh, sorry, first instant first sorcery or first otter spell, you cast this turn, you can have an opponent draw a card, and then you copy the spell. Again, copy of an otter becomes a token otter. Um, so you can, this is basically the gift mechanic, gift a card to copy. So it's kind of she's making like everything into like a gift mechanic. Not everything, I guess. Sorceries, instants, and otters. So potentially all of your creatures and your sorceries and instants into like a gift mechanic thing. Um, very strong in any deck, but like if you're going otter kindred, it's insane. You're just gonna like go off with that. As I said before, otters have very very high synergy with spell slingers. So yeah. That would be very good. Um, 75 cents. All right, so we are looking at our otters. Yeah, Daring Wave Rider for uh, blue, blue for a 4 4. High CMC, I, I do think. If you're not copying this, it's not worth it. When Daring Otter enters, you may cast uh, target instance or sorcery spell with mana value 4 or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If this spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. Once again, if you've got some uh, adventures, cast the adventure, it goes into exile as like, then you can just recast it. And potentially if you can flicker this or something, you can just keep like doing that in a big circle over and over and over. Uh, so yeah, well worth it, especially if you're making a copy of it. You let someone else draw, and then you're casting two things with up to four mana value, or four CMC, from your graveyard. Um, for six mana, you're getting a four, four, and two spells. Uh, that's some value. 17 cents, Pearl of Wisdom, two in a blue. So it costs one less to cast if you control an otter. Draw two cards. For two mana, drawing two cards is amazing, but... It's a sorcery. So with this, you're going to make give someone else a card draw, make a copy and draw four cards for two mana. That's nuts. That's just nuts. Oh boy. 12 cents. Kindle Spark Duo. Two in a red. Tap whenever uh, it deals one damage to target opponent. Nah, okay. Damage increaser, right? Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell and tap Kindle Spark Duo. Spell Slinger decks, you're going to be casting non creature spells constantly, right? So that's good. just extra damage you're throwing at whoever you want every turn. And with some kind of like damage increaser, that's going to be a lot. That's basically like casting shock every time you cast any other non creature spell. 
it's uh it adds up very quickly that's for sure anyway 11 cents A list. All right, so we've got Niv Mizzet, Aaron, 115, and Hilo. And Hello, the painter, 50 cents. Eris, Roar of the Storm, 99 cents. Rico of Many Pass, 25 cents. Alania, Divergent Storm, 75 cents. Oh my. Almost all under a dollar, except for Niv Mizzet. Ah, Niv Mizzet. Anyway. All right, take it easy.